Nathaniel Brandon Institute, Principles of Efficient Thinking, Lecture Number Nine, Guest Lecturer Nathaniel Brandon. Ladies and gentlemen, during the past eight weeks, Mrs. Brandon has been discussing with you various psychoepistemological errors which a good many of you perhaps practice at least some of the time. Tonight I'm going to discuss a psychoepistemological error that you less commonly practice yourselves than are the victims of in others. I think that at this stage of your knowledge you are not too likely to be very guilty of this fallacy yourself. I think it's highly likely that you will encounter it quite commonly in others. This fallacy, as Mrs. Brandon indicated to you last week, is the fallacy of the stolen concept. I discussed the basic meaning and nature of the stolen concept, regrettably too briefly, in Basic Principles of Objectivism. A great many students at that time requested a lengthier presentation of that issue, and that's what we will go into a little more exhaustively tonight. Let me begin by pointing out the following to you, or giving you the following guarantee. As certain as I am that we are all here together in this room tonight, that certain am I that if you continue in public to discuss the philosophy of objectivism, within the next 20 conversations that you have, or the next year, whichever comes sooner, as the ads say, you will encounter 90% of the examples I will analyze tonight exhibiting the stolen concept fallacy. Before redefining the stolen concept fallacy for you, I want to begin by giving you an archetypical example of it. It's a very famous statement made by a French anarchist who was very much opposed to capitalism and to the institution of private property and who therefore uttered a statement which has been echoed many times since, namely that, quote, all property is theft, close quote. Now I want you to think about this statement. On political grounds, of course, you will be unsympathetic to it, but that's not where I want your focus to be this evening. I don't want you to conclude merely, no, all property isn't theft. I want you to recognize that uh, there's something else wrong with this particular statement, more basic than the fact that it's false. Don't you suspect hearing it, whether you can identify it immediately or not, that there is something wrong with that statement? Well, let's analyze the key concepts in this statement. I won't pause on the meaning of the words all and is. Some philosophers might feel we should. I'll assume a common understanding there I want instead for us to address our attention to the concepts of theft and the concepts of property. Because in this particular example, the concept of theft is the stolen concept. What is theft? Theft means to take by force or fraud someone else's property. In the evolution of man's concepts and knowledge, he would first have to have arrived at the concept of property, of rightful ownership, then recognizing the phenomenon of one man taking from another man the second man's rightfully owned property, men would grasp the phenomena of theft, of stealing. But what is important here is that the concept of theft logically presupposes and requires the antecedent concept of property or rightful ownership. 
if you would repudiate the validity of the concept of property or if you would maintain that there is no such thing as rightful ownership you would simultaneously have to relinquish your right to the concept of theft because the concept of theft wouldn't have any meaning any longer and thus we can see that the concept of property is one of the genetic roots of the concept of theft it's one of the elements in the structure of man's knowledge as it were necessary to support the concept of theft to repeat property logically antecedes the concept of theft but once we see this why then we can appreciate that the statement all property is theft is worse than false it's a contradiction in terms technically speaking it's a meaningless utterance because it contains a self-contradiction the concept of theft requires the existence of rightfully owned property and therefore it is an outright plain contradiction to declare all property is theft and technically or epistemologically speaking therefore the statement is literally insane it's nonsense it's as though one were to say all squares are circular it would be equally meaningful or epistemologically plausible now this is as i mentioned the archetypical example of the stolen concept now let us proceed to define the stolen concept as exhibited in this example the stolen concept fallacy consists of using a concept while denying or ignoring the logically antecedent concepts upon which the concept one is using depends in this case in den denying the existence of rightfully owned property while seeking to retain the concept theft one is stealing the concept theft meaning taking that to which one has no epistemological right the stolen concept fallacy consists to repeat of using a concept while attempting to ignore or to deny its genetic roots those antecedent concepts upon which logically the concept one is using depends one of the best examples first used by mrs brandon explaining this genetic relationship between concepts and one which we commonly use in explaining the stolen concept fallacy is the relationship for example between the concept of orphans and the concept of parent consider what both concepts mean and then ask yourself this question in the development of human knowledge would it be a matter of chance or arbitrary accident which concept men arrived at first could they equally well have arrived first at the concept of orphans or at the concept of parents or do you perceive immediately that by the meaning of the two concepts men had to grasp one namely of course parents before they could arrive at such a phenomenon or such a concept as orphans namely children who do not any longer have their parents here we can see a very simple elementary example of the manner in which one concept can depend upon a logically antecedent concept in this case orphans and parents and so if a person were to declare there are not now nor were there ever in the history of the race any parents there never were any parents man grew in some other unknown way the universe is populated by orphans that would be a example of the stolen concept if it sounds of course absurd and far-fetched it's no more so than all property is theft now let us briefly in order to see the context in which the fallacy of the stolen concept appears and in order the better to appreciate its importance let us briefly remind ourselves of what we have established in the basic principles course concerning the hierarchical structure of all human knowledge remember to begin with that all human knowledge can be divided into two categories 
knowledge which is inferred 